Good to be back in that deliverance temple this morning. Amen. Bring your greetings from a Potter's House Church of God and Bishop Spada and Mystic. Amen. And, uh, been enjoying the service so far. And I wanted to speak to you this morning, if you would, out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you'll turn with me there. Glad to be in the house of God with family this morning. Travel with my wife and two sons. Amen. It's good to be here with the family of God. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 24. He says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. He says, So run that you might obtain... Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. But I keep under my body, and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And then one more verse in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 5. It says, and If a man also strive for the masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. So if you'll bow your heads with me, we'll pray for the preaching of the word. Amen. Father God, we come to you, Lord, again in the name of Jesus. God, we count it a privilege, Lord, to be in your house, Lord, with your people, Lord, gathered around the word of God, Lord, another opportunity to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the anointing to come upon the your man's servant today, Lord, that I might do no harm to the word of God, Lord, but the Words might be relevant, Lord, and revolutionary, Lord, and helpful to this people, Lord. God, that you would bless this congregation with ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church, Lord. Give us a mind to understand the Holy Scriptures today, Lord. A, a heart, Lord, that, that would be desirous, Lord, of the things of God this day, Lord. God, I pray that you would bless the remainder of this service, Lord, and you would speak to us today, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning about striving for the mastery. In other words, the having dominion over something. In other words, you know, he says to run the race like you're gonna you're gonna win the race. You know, a lot of people nowadays in 2016 Christianity, they're showing up for the race, but they're not running the race to win the race. And the apostle Paul is saying. I don't want it to be like that in the case of the Corinthian church. I want you guys not to just show up for the race. And I think of several years ago how my wife, uh, she showed up for the Hartford Marathon. And there was thousands of people that showed up for the race that day. Maybe 30 or 40,000 people that had, had showed up for the race that day. But, but how many knows that when the finish line was drawn and that only one person showed up and won the race that day out of 30 or 40,000 people. And Paul is comparing our Christian life like a long marathon race. And how many knows that, you know, some of us that have got saved as a, as a little child and now we're in our 60s or our 70s or our 80s, it's been an awful long time since the day that you first gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not so much to just show up for the race. It, it's not so much to just get off to a good start. The Bible says that the, the race is not to the swift, but it's to those that follow through. And God is asking for us as the, the Christians of, of 2016 to, to begin to follow through with the commitment that we've made to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that He's able to keep that which we've committed unto Him against that day. There's no, shortage in po there's no shortage of power in heaven today. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still omnipotent. 
He's still omniscient. He's still omnipresent. He's still the King of Kings. He's still the Lord of Lords. He's still the Master of the Universe. He's still the Creator of all mankind. He's still the I Am. He's what you need Him to be. Do you need a healer this morning? He's, he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that healeth thee. Do you need a provider this morning? He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides for all of our needs. Do you need peace in your life? He's Jehovah Shalom. Do you need righteousness in your life? He's Jehovah Tiskanu. What do you need Him to be? There's no shortage in heaven this morning, my friends. But God is asking us in 2016 to not run this race like many are running it today. They're running it with a casual, complacent attitude. They're not giving God their very best. They're not trying to do their very best. And I think of as it was as a, as a young man growing up. Back, back many years ago, I'm almost 58 now, but if, as a young, young teenage boy, as a young boy, 8, 10 years old, my dad was a sports advocate, and you know we got involved in sports as a young age. And you know my dad would get out there, and he would play baseball with me. We'd get gloves and we'd pass the ball back and forth to each other, and we'd do this for hours and hours at a time. And I didn't know that you know as I entered the little league that one day I'd be able to pitch a no hitter. You know I'd pitch that whole game and pitch to all them other boys that would stand up before me to bat that ball. And nobody hit the ball that day and got a hit off me. That came through practice. You know, and I think of other sporting events as, um, you know, we'd, we'd pass the football sometimes and, you know, time would go on and, you know, I'd get involved in leagues and, um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to quarterback. You know, and that didn't come by coincidence. It came by hard work. You know, hours and hours and on end. And I think of all these you know, young boys nowadays, they, they, they have a desire in their heart that they want to grow up and they want to be a, a pro football player or a pro baseball player or a pro basketball player. And they'll spend hours down at the court or they'll spend hours in their backyard with their friends and they'll be practicing ball. ball. But, um, you know, how many knows that only those that follow through and those that continue to, to practice and those that continue to put hours and hours you know, to, to be the very best that they can. Those are the ones that become the professional ball players, The ones that strive for the mastery. How many of you are, 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 are giving God your very best today? You know, and Timothy said, it wasn't just enough. Anybody's going gonna, to gonna pursue the mastery of Christianity. In other words, you're going you're gonna to be the very best Christian that you can be. He says that he must strive lawfully. Amen. You must strive lawfully to be the very best. And how many knows that God has set down some rules and regulations for this thing they call Christianity? Amen. You know, it's not just any which way that we want to live our life. But God has, He has established some things that are everlasting decrees in heaven. A perpetual ordinance is that He would desire for us to live our life in a certain way. The Bible says that that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. And we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Amen. The Bible says upon these two commandments hang all of the law and all of the prophets. You know, if you keep the two, you keep the ten. That you shall have no other gods before him. And you shall make no graven image of anything that's in heaven or the earth or the sea below. That you shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That you shall honor your parents. That you shall keep the Sabbath day holy. That you shall not murder. That you shall not lie. That you shall not steal. That you shall not commit adultery. That you shall not covet your neighbor's property or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Jesus said a new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. See, God expects a, a certain way for his people to walk. If they're going to strive for the masteries, that they must do it lawfully. Holiness is still the standard in 2016. Even though that the world is filled with idols. The world is filled with lust. 
The world is filled with pornography. The world is filled with gambling. The world is filled with drug and alcohol abuse. All these things people participate in. Many are on that wide road that leads to destruction, but few are walking the narrow way in 2016. And Paul the Apostle is telling the Christian, the Corinthian church, he says, I don't want you guys to just show up for the race. I want you guys to begin to run this race that you might obtain first prize. In other words, it's time to give Jesus Christ your very best. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him that we might have life and life more abundantly. God held back not his best, but he gave his very best to us. And he's expecting his very best from us, my friends. Greater love has no man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. And our friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, laid down his life on an old rugged cross when Roman soldiers took nails and drove them through the most sensitive parts of his body, his hands and his feet. They pierced his side and his blood was poured out as a ransom sacrifice for you and me because of God's great love for us. Our friend Jesus laid down his life for us. Our friend Jesus is requiring of us that we might lay down our life for him. If any man would come after Christ, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow in the steps of the Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Now Jesus was a man that went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He was one that desired to do the will of the Father. He was one that rose up early even before the sun came out. He was spending time with the Father praying looking to do the will of God for that day's activities. Amen. How many of you have that kind of prayer life? I, ha I haven't yet achieved that kind of prayer life, but I'll tell you one, th one thing. I haven't yet apprehended, but this one thing I do, yes. forgetting the things that are behind, yes. I'm pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm not letting the defeats of the past dictate my future, my friends. Amen. I think of so many people that have had, you know, tattered past. You know, their past have been bad. You know, they've gone to jail. They've got strung out on drugs. They've got strung out on alcohol. They've done a lot of things that they're ashamed of, and they can't seem to get beyond their past. Their mind is still living in the past. But the Bible says if any man be in Christ, we have the mind of Christ. Amen. 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 The Bible says to cast down the imaginations, to cast down the high thoughts. Every thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ, bring every thought into captivity under obedience to Christ. You don't have a, If you're striving for the mastery, my friends, you've got to begin to think right thoughts. The Bible says to think upon things that are honest and true and just and pure and lovely. If there be of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says to think on these things. Amen, amen. you got to strive lawfully, my friends. The psalmist says, I'll set no wicked thing before my eyes. What are you watching on TV? What are you watching on the internet? What kind of books are you reading? What kind of magazines are you reading? What, what, who's, who's dictating the thoughts that come into your life? Is Hollywood dictating? Or are you spending time in the house of God, not forsaking the assembling of the saints, so much as we see that day approaching? It's not going to just happen by happenstance in your life or my life. No, Paul... Paul, he began to come against the, the Corinthian church. He says that they were still babies at times. He says, you know, the time, should, time has come where you guys ought to be teachers now. Yes. He says, but, but you're still babies. You still desire it. You still need the pure milk of the word. You should be able to be, eat strong meat at this Amen. point. Amen. In other words, they, they, they weren't striving for the mastery. They weren't giving it all they got. And that's why they were staying spiritual infants. And that let that not be the case in Deliverance Temple this morning. Let us be inspired by the, the Apostle Paul's writing about 2,000 years ago as he began to spur this church on 
and he began to tell them, you know, begin to be temperate in all things. You got to live a life of self-control. The world is filled with lust. The world is filled with, with ungodliness. You know, but the standard is still holiness in 2016. Amen. Bible says that God's holy and he desires a holy people. And without holiness, no man or no woman's going to see God. Amen. Scripture says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. He says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, he says, I beseech you, brethren, yeah. by the mercies of God, yeah. that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, yeah. holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, he says, be not conformed to the image of this world. Yeah. He says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen, yeah, amen. See, it's not, even, it's not even doing a special thing living a holy life. He says, that's your reasonable service. You know, how is your life being conformed? If you're not spending time in the book, I tend to think that you're being conformed to the image of this world. And other things are transforming your life. You've got to continue to read the book until the book reads you. Amen. And you begin to look into the mirror. And you begin to see a reflection of how you look spiritually before a holy and a just God. The book will show you how to live this life. The book will show you how to finish this life. The book will show you what God requires from you. He, he's required certain things from, from us. Book of Micah, he says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And the New Testament says that we should be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. In the Old Testament, it says that the Lord would require us to love Him and to serve Him and to fear Him and to keep His commandments and to walk in His ways and keep His statutes. You know, God, God expects certain things from His people. Yes. Amen. Amen. God expects us to be worshipers. Amen. You know, God's looking for those that would worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. I know that, you know, the churches are probably filled today all over this country, filled with people. You know, they're lifting up hands. They're singing songs. They're dancing. You know, they're, they're, they're having a good time in the house of God. But how many are lifting up holy hands Amen. without wrath or doubting? We're, 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 to, we're to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You know, we can't go out and live like the devil all week and then come into the house of God on Sunday morning and lift up our hands and think that God's accepting that as true worship. You're, you're going to worship God in spirit and in truth if God's going to accept your worship. I think of in the Old Testament, there was a couple young men. They thought it was all right to just worship God any which way. And the Bible says they offered up strange fire upon the altar and they were consumed that day and many people in 2016 Christianity they're offering up strange fire you know they'll, they'll lift up their hands they'll sing loud they'll dance you know they'll praise but they're, they're, they're doing it with dirty hands they're doing it with a dirty mind they're doing it with dirty thoughts they're doing it with dirty actions where their feet go what their hands touch what their eyes look like. God's not accepting that in 2016. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's looking for us to strive for the mastery, to begin to do your very best. You know, we can look in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says that there was a great cloud of witnesses that's gone before us, my friends. This is not an exceptional event for someone to live a good life before God. Many people have done it. But throughout the ages, the Bible commends three men. In the, book, in, in, in the book of Ezekiel, he commended the, the prophet Daniel. The Bible says that, you know, Daniel was among the captives of the children of Israel when King Nebuchadnezzar, he came in and he, he took over that country. The Bible says, but in Daniel, he, it was seen that he had an excellent spirit. Yeah. Amen. 
That's the way I want people to see me. That this guy, he's got an excellent spirit. Amen. You know, people, people can see what you're about. I think of the guy that led me to the Lord back in 1988. He was just an ordinary man working an ordinary job in a, in a, in a factory where they made airplane parts. He didn't make a lot of money. He had a wife and, and children at home. You know, and um, he probably didn't have two quarters left to rub together after he paid his bills that week. But this guy started speaking to me about the Lord Jesus Christ. He started telling me that Christ was coming again. He started telling me that if I kept living the way I was living, I was on my way to hell. And you know something? When I looked upon the countenance of this man, when I looked at his face, he wasn't an ordinary looking man like we would see when we walk through the mall today or the restaurant or wherever we go today. There's going to be a lot of ordinary people. You know, there's no life in their eyes. You know, their, their face is, is downtrodden. You know, they're, they're sad. There's no, there's, no, there's no edification coming from their lips. There's nothing good coming from their mouth. But that wasn't the case with this man. When I looked at his face, he had a smile on his face. His countenance was lifted up. He was bright. He was letting his light so shine before the world that I could see his good works. Amen. 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 Something different. The light was on. The Holy Ghost was evident in his life. He was striving for the mastery at that time. Amen. And that's what God's asking us to do. To begin to let our light so shine before men that they would see our good works and glorify our Heavenly Father. Amen. Bible says that the salt's good for nothing if it's lost its saltiness. Mm. Don't lose your saltiness, my friends. Amen. You know, salt's a preservative. We need to preserve this, this ungodly, corrupt world by the way that we live our life. You know, you might be the only, the only um, person that demonstrates Jesus in your neighborhood. You know, you might be the only person that demonstrates Jesus upon your job or at the school that you go to. Maybe you're one of the only Christians there. But you can make a difference, my friend, just by your very presence in that place. Just by the prayers that you pray for those people. You can make a difference. Amen. And that's what God is asking us, you know, to begin to rise up and be like these people. These three men that were commended in the book of Ezekiel. You know, Daniel was one in an excellent spirit. Job was another man. He was commended. The Bible says that he eschewed evil. He eschewed evil. He was a man that was upright. He feared God and he eschewed evil. And we know that we, we, we can look back and... And, and the, re, the account of the life of Job. Job went through more than probably uh, any of us will ever go through in this life. You know, he lost all of his children in a day's time. And to add insult to injury, he lost all of his wealth in a day's time. He lost the respect of his wife in a day's time. And, 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 and matters even came worse. He got tempted even further when he lost his health in another day's time. The guy, the guy lost everything in a series of a few days. All of, his, all of his wealth, all of his children, his reputation with his friends and his wife. He lost his health. And the Bible says in, in all that, he didn't even curse God with his mouth. You know, he still maintained his integrity through all that. He still kept his faith. That's why God saw something in this man. He refused to quit despite the odds. He was still running the race to win the race despite the odds, despite the boils that were upon his, on his body, despite the pain, despite all the loss, despite all the hardship that he was going through. He was still determined that he was going to follow through with the commitment that he made to God one day. Yeah, amen. 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 And that's the, the determination that we need to have as the people of God. The Bible says that he that endures until the end will be saved. That in your patience possess ye your soul. Jesus promised us in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Jesus promised us in Matthew 24 that there would come a point in history that except the days were shortened, that not even the very elect would be saved. We're living in trying times, my friends. It's time to make a, a full commitment to Christ. It's time not to just show up at this marathon race like 
30 or 40,000 other people did that day at the Hartford Marathon and only one person run, won that race. It's time to run the race to win the race, my friend. It's time to run the race to obtain the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We're looking for an incorruptible crown that fadeth not away. I'm talking about lasting riches. Amen. A lot of people will get big paychecks this week all throughout the country. Some will make a thousand a week, some will make five hundred a week, some will make ten thousand, maybe some will even make a million dollars a week. You know, but that's just money that you can't take with you. Jesus said, Don't lay up treasures here on earth where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust can corrupt nor thieves can break through and steal. He says a man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of the things that he possesses. You can make all the money and be the richest person upon the earth. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have nothing. You could be the poorest beggar on all throughout every continent in the whole world. You could be the most poor person upon the earth. But if you got Jesus, amen. If you got Jesus, you're a possessor of all things. Amen. He that overcomes inherits all things. He'll be an heir with God. He'll be a joint heir with Christ. You'll inherit a city whose builder and maker is God. You'll walk through streets of gold that's garnished with all precious jewels. You'll sit down at the marriage wedding supper of the Lamb one day. Amen. And you'll sit down with the people of God, the prophets and the apostles and the patriarchs and the matriarchs, all the elders, all the deacons, all the pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets apostles. Amen. I want to be among that number, my friend. How about you? I'm looking to give Jesus my very best in 2016. I think of all the doors that God has been opening up for us in our ministry. In the days ahead, we got 10 revivals to preach about over the next 10 months. God's sending us all over the country. We're going to California. We're going to we're going to um, Idaho, we're going to Utah, we're going to Canada, we're going to Texas and Oklahoma. But you know, if I if I don't if I'm not striving for the mastery, if I'm not if I don't have an excellent spirit, if I'm not if I don't have ears to hear what the spirit would say to the church, if God's not confirming the word with signs following. If it's just me showing up with trying to speak with enticing words of man's wisdom, I don't have nothing. I need Christ to preach. Amen. I'm nothing without Him. I can do nothing without the Spirit of God. Amen. If I don't abide in the vine and His words don't abide in me, I'm cast forth as a branch. Amen. But, but with, through Christ. Amen. You know, Paul, Paul figured it out in Romans chapter 7. You know, he, 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 he grew up with, he was, he was good stock. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews, the Bible said. He was a Jew from Tarsus, the, the city of Cilicia. You know, he was, a, he was of the stock of, um, of the Israelites. He was a Benjamite. He was circumcised the eighth day. He, he grew up and he sat under the finest teachers of the day, Gamaliel, who was a, who was a re reputed scholar of the day. You know, Paul, you know, as touching the law, he was blameless. He was zealous for the things of God. Amen. You know, this guy, he was, um, he was zealous and he, he was giving it his very best, what he knew to do even before he was a Christian. And then he had this miraculous encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ where Christ showed up in the book of Acts and um, he became blind for a certain season. And, and God sent someone to lay hands upon Paul. Amen. And Paul got his eyesight back and he received the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then he went, he went into a, a wilderness situation where he began to strive for the excellence. Amen. He began to, he began to strive for the masteries. And Paul came out and he began to preach. And he, be, he, he, he wrote about half the New Testament scriptures to us. But how many knows that even Paul, is, as great of a, an apostle as he was, he struggled at times with Christianity. We can see evidence of that in Romans chapter 7. He says, the things that I want to do, I don't end up doing. 
But the things that I don't want to do, I end up doing at times. He says, in me dwells no good thing. The only thing that was good within himself was the Holy Spirit. Amen. He comes to a point of frustration in Romans chapter 7. He says, oh wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from this body of sin? But it doesn't stop there. Paul didn't stay in that condition of wondering how, it's going, how he's going to obtain the prize. He says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. And the thought doesn't end there, but it continues on into the very next chapter, Romans chapter 8. It says, there therefore is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through sinful flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, He condemns sin in the flesh, that we should be able to fulfill the righteous requirements of the law if we would walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You've got to understand that if you're going to strive for the mastery, if you're going to try to flesh this thing out, and you're going to try to do your very best within your own strength, you'll fail and fail miserably time and time again. You've got to get close to the source of your power. I think of it, you know, these electrical instruments, they, these guys, they play so beautifully on the guitars and on the, on the, on the piano, you know, the, the keyboard there. They play so beautifully, the girls sing so beautifully, but, you know, without, without the electricity, without the power, you know, we, we, we can't hear it as good. Amen? you got to get plugged into the source of your strength. The source of your strength is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He's the only one that will give you the power to live a victorious life. If you try to do it without prayer, if you try to do it without the Word of God, if you try to do it without worship, you're going to keep failing and failing, failing miserably. But if you'll have a daily prayer life, my friends, if you'll have a daily devotional life in the Word of God, if you'll have a daily time of worshiping this King in spirit and in truth, if you'll not just be concerned about you and your family, and you'll begin to participate in gathering in this harvest of the last day, if you'll begin to take the things of God seriously, and strive for the mastery. Amen. God will put such an anointing upon your life. Amen. Amen. That people will begin to see. Hey, you know, I don't, I don't, they saw about the early church. They said, you know, these guys, they spent time with Jesus. You know, and they'll begin to say that about you. There's something different about brother so-and-so. You know, he doesn't talk the way he used to. Amen. I remember Amen. how he used to complain all the time and be negative and be condescending, and be rude and disrespectful. But he doesn't talk the same way that he used to talk. Now when he talks, he's uplifting. Now when he talks, you know, I get some help from his words. Now when he talks, I, I get comforted. I get encouraged. I get blessed. I get edified. I get exhorted. That's what God wants to come from our mouths, my friends. He doesn't go to the same places that he used to. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I don't see him in the casinos anymore. Amen. Yeah, Amen. I don't see him going to the, the to the to the package store in the corner anymore. Amen. Yeah, I don't see I don't hear swear words coming from his mouth anymore. Hallelujah. Something's different about him. Yeah, man, yeah, He's man. beginning to walk in the spirit. Amen. Yeah, man. And I'm beginning to see Jesus now. I don't see him anymore. Hallelujah. I see the spirit of God working through brother so-and-so. I see the spirit of God working through sister so-and-so. And isn't that just the way that it should be, my friends? Amen. But are we going to do our part? Are we going to do our part? And are we going to strive for the mastery? Yes. You know, in other words, we want to take dominion over this thing they call Christianity. We want to, we want to, we want to do it with a spirit of excellence. Amen. I think of all the people that they want to excel in their jobs. They want to get a good job where they can make a lot of money. You know, and they start as a teenager. And they start studying hard in high school. And they get good grades, you know. And they get a good SAT scores. And they get commended to a good college. And they go to college and they get their associate's degree. 
And they don't quit there, they get a bachelor's degree. And they don't quit there, they even get a master's degree. And somewhere before the decade's over, they get a doctorate. In, in what, they, what, they, what they wanted to learn. They strive for the mastery. They wanted to master their trade so they can get the very biggest paycheck they can get. Well, as a Christian, we need to have the same mentality, my friend. You better be the very best Christian that you can be in 2016. We got to learn how to talk right. We got to learn how to act right. We got to learn how to walk right, touch right. Look at the, look at, amen. God wants that from us. God loves this congregation. This is a strong exhortation this morning. I'm sure it's not a, a jumping up, you know, clapping your hands type of message. But this is an exhortation, amen, amen, amen that can help you bear much fruit in this life. Amen, you know, amen. I don't want to just stumble into heaven and just barely make it. Be scratching at heaven's doors and just hoping they open the door to me. I want to follow through and win this race they call Christianity. How many of you are with me this morning? Amen. That's what this altar is for. You can't do it, but he can. I can't, but he can. Amen. Amen. I don't have the power and the ability. In me dwelleth no good thing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from this body of sin? Amen. I thank Paul. I thank God that Paul, he didn't stay there in that place. He came to a point in his Christian experience. He said, follow me. And I, you know, follow me and the things that you see me do, the things that you hear me say, the way that you see me live my life, you live your life in such a way. In other words, I'm showing you the way to heaven. Amen. And he comes to the end of his life and he says that, you know, I fought a good fight. You know, I've kept the faith. There's a crown of righteousness waiting be, waiting for me. Amen. That's Amen. not the same man that was in Romans 7 Amen. who was struggling Amen. with his Christian walk. Yes. He came to a place of being an overcomer, Amen. of being more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And that's the same place that God wants to take you and me. Amen. In 2016. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. That God wants you to be an excellent Christian. Amen. Amen. That God wants you to, 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 to let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your heavenly Father. Amen. You'll bow your heads with me. We're going to give you an opportunity to respond to the Word of God. Amen. That's what... You know, I've done my, my, my part and, and preached what I felt God had, had laid upon my heart. Yes. Now it's time for the people of God to do their part. If anything good here was said and you need to have special prayer this morning, that's what this altar is for. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to preach to this congregation, Lord, a, a strong exhortation, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would... Father, touch the, touch the words that were shared, oh God. I did the very best I could to try to share your heart with this people, Lord. But Lord, it's your turn to, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would show up, Lord, and you begin to convict of, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And maybe there's some in this room that are, that are struggling with their Christianity. You know, they need, they, need, they need Jesus. And, you know, maybe this message is really hard for them to hear. But Lord, you're, you're no respecter of persons this morning. You know, what you did for the saints that are recorded in that scripture, you could do for every boy, every girl, every man, every woman in this congregation. If you need special prayer this morning, that God's spoken to you through this message, if you come to this altar, I'd like to pray for you this morning. Give God an opportunity to give you the power that you need to lead, lead a victorious life, to have a spirit of excellence in 2016. That you could be a blessing onto your family. You could be a blessing onto those at your workplace. Amen.